Hi. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dom. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I typically make bookish content, movie content, and anything else in between because I like to do whatever I want on this channel and tonight's going to be movie content. For today's video, we are going to go over the worst films I watched in 2022. In the year 2022, I watched 102 films and I picked 10 movies for this list. None of these movies are rewatches, all of them are new to me movies, and not all of them came out in 2022, so just be aware of that. I'm gonna discuss them going from number 10, my favorite of these trash films, all the way down to my worst one. And I'm also gonna link up above my best movies of 2022. And without further ado, let's get started. So at number 10, we have Rob Zombie's The Munsters. The Munsters was a 1960s show about a family of monsters. The dad's a Frankenstein monster, the mom and the mom and the grandpa are vampires, and the son is a werewolf. And they also have a niece who's normal, like us, and unbeknownst to them, they aren't normal, but they act normal. Rob Zombie made a movie about Lily and Herman, yeah, Lily and Herman first meeting, and unfortunately the only saving grace of this movie is the costumes and the set designs because they went hard with those. They went all, it was like go big or go home, and they went all in. Both the costumes and the set designs look like a cartoon came to life and that's exactly what I want from a kooky storyline like this. However, the humor was very campy too and I do not mean that in a good way. It was campy to the point that it was corny but too corny for its own good over the top to the point I, I was physically cringing and I felt a lot of secondhand embarrassment throughout this whole film. Everyone overacted in this film which made the characters like you think that would work given the premise but like it made all these characters seem out of character. I felt everyone was mischaracterized. I understand the shtick of the original monsters is that these monster like beings think they're normal in a normal world and they're kind of oblivious to the fact that they're not. However, I've seen a few episodes in passing growing up and I don't remember them being stupid and dumb. Herman was very endearing, but in this movie he's goofy to the point it's annoying and I cannot see what Lily Munster sees in him. And Lily Munster I don't remember being dumb at all, and yet in this one it's ridiculous. Rob Zombie's wife plays Lily Munster and it's almost like her interpretation was to make Lily like stupid and psychotic in a way and it felt insulting. And you know given the costuming, the set designs, and the little easter eggs here and there, the inspiration and the love of the original TV show was clearly there but because of all these issues I had with it, it still felt like a parody. Which is a shame because Rob Zombie is a weird guy so you think he would be perfect for something like this but it just felt incredibly flat. But having said that, I did give it a two out of, I didn't want to give it one out of five stars, I gave it two out of five stars because as much as I just didn't like this movie and I like viscerally cringed, I still kept watching, I couldn't stop watching, it was a train wreck I could not look away from. But if you are a big fan of the Munsters, I highly recommend staying away from this film. At number nine we have Laika's Missing Link, which is about an explorer who comes across Bigfoot or Sasquatch and they go on a mission to find Yeti so that the Sasquatch has a family. As a story, I thought this fell flat. The biggest issue with this movie is that they tried to fit a three hour movie into an hour and 45 minutes so therefore there wasn't enough room for the characters to grow and develop and I did not care about their journey and the pacing of this movie was kind of god awful. To me it was very choppy because they wanted to rush forward to the big plot points but again they didn't give the characters time to develop so their I mean their motives made sense all things considered but like wish there was more of an emotional impact but we couldn't get that because there's no development. The humor also tried too hard I think to appeal to adults as well so you know this could be a family movie that all could enjoy but I felt like it was only humor that 10 year olds would laugh at and that like it's what 14 year olds think adults think is funny and the main reason I made it to this list is because it was boring and quite frankly for the most part forgettable because I know it rushed through the emotional impact to get to the bigger plot points but I can't really tell you what those big plot points are anymore also the character designs were ugly at number eight we have the power of the dog this is a western and it's about a cowboy whose brother brings his new family home to the ranch and our main protagonist does not like that. And he also has a secret of his own. This movie is just a victim of not being my cup of tea. I've never liked westerns, especially one that's slow and boring, my god. But I only watched this because it was an Oscar nominee for Best Picture and I was trying to watch all of them before the Oscars. Without that I would have never chosen to watch this on my own. And like I'm, maybe the writing's good. It was cool at the end of the movie piecing together all the subtle foreshadowing that was spread throughout the film. However, this is just not my genre and 
that's it. I don't want to harp on it too much because this is a me issue and not an issue with the film itself. At number seven, we actually have a short film called Fox. This is about a girl who gets kidnapped by foxes. I kind of hated everything about this. I've seen plot lines like this before. I, I mean, there's a film in my best movies list that basically has this plot line, but changing the kidnapper to foxes kind of did nothing for me. And the character designs were really ugly. I was not here for the art style, which I think kind of took me out of it, especially the foxes. Because I know, like, I get it. Like, the foxes the design of the foxes was to make them look creepy and scary but like I didn't get that to me they just looked ridiculous and I really do think this should have remained a silent short film the voice acting in this really felt out of place and actually kind of took me out of the story and I was reading comments and everyone in the comments because it's on YouTube everyone in the comments loved this and thought it was creepy they thought the ending was so shocking and I just didn't feel that like at all I feel like I'm missing something and I don't know what it is but either way, it is number seven on the list of worst movies of the year. Almost said best, and that is a lie. Number six, we have a Christmas movie called A Boy Called Christmas. This is pre-Santa Claus days. It's essentially a Santa Claus origin story. It's about a boy who needs to run off to some elf land where his mom grew up. He claims his mom always called him Christmas because of this place. It's a whole thing. Santa Claus origin story, that's all you need to know. It's a really cute premise. I'm actually always down for a Santa Claus origin story, but for some reason, just this one just didn't hit for me. This movie clearly had some sort of budget, but the set design still looked like cheap plastic and like they would break if you just blew on it. The CGI animals were very off-putting like you know when there's something kind of so realistic it looks fake? That's what the reindeer and the mouse look like. Granted I was expecting James Corden's voice to come out of the mouse and luckily that did not happen so thank you that is a point to you guys. But I don't know it just it looked too weird. It could have been the child actor too because you could clearly tell he was talking to nothing behind the camera and then he just didn't know how to act well with his surroundings. Which I guess leads to my next point. The child actor, all the child actors in this actually have a long way to go. And especially this guy. It's so funny reading his bio on Letterboxd because you can you could tell a parent clearly wrote it saying how he rose to stardom. He's he's a hit, famous, and it's like he's kind of trash. And a lot of the negative reviews for this film focused on that, how bad his acting is. But then it makes me wonder if it's like a director issue, like how was what how was he directed? because Sally Hawkins is in this and so are some other big names like the dad is played by a guy in Game of Thrones but even these well-established actors had stunted acting Sally Hawkins felt very off and makes me wonder why she's even in this movie in the first place I feel like she's too decorated for something like this I don't know so maybe it's a director's issue because I know like even the best actor if you have a shit director you can only do so much with what you, with what you're given also this movie was corny which like I've said before there's some there's some Christmas movies where I for I forgive corniness I'm never a huge fan of corniness as long as it's like self-aware I guess a lot of Christmas movies can get away with it so for some reason it, not this one can and I was so caught up with how eye roll inducing this was that during the emotional parts I felt nothing like near the end there was Sally Hawkins is having her monologue you're clearly supposed to feel something and I didn't care again just rolled my eyes also this movie was too long there was no reason for this movie to be as long as it was I felt like I was watching like a four-hour movie and I don't even think it's two hours long also it's called a boy called Christmas but he's barely called Christmas throughout the whole film. They used his name Nicholas, mostly. I think I think he was only called Christmas may, maybe twice. How are you gonna have the title A Boy Called Christmas and not... What? I'm so, I'm so confused. The dad in this movie is hot though. At number five we have Falling for Christmas, so another Christmas movie. This is about a rich woman who has amnesia. She goes to the North Star Lounge, meets a guy, falls in love. It's a fucking Hallmark movie. It's a Netflix Hallmark movie. And I hate I hate Hallmark movies. Whenever I watch one, it's definitely gonna make this list. This film has everything I hate about Hallmark or Hallmark-esque movies. Cheesy lines that are trying way too hard to be romantic. The the stupid piano music. It all they all have the same piano music. The same plot line that every single other Hallmark movie has. The cheesy the unrealistic cheesiness, the terrible acting, and then every intentional funny joke falls flat, and then the serious moments end up being real funny. I know that's why some people find comfort in these movies, but I can't. I think they're a joke and they <laughs> these movies take themselves too seriously. However, anything for my girl Lindsay, I'm not even clapping on beat, anything for my girl Lindsay Lohan. That's the only reason I watched this movie because it's apparently her comeback. I wish it was better. I wish she would join better comeback movies, but beggars can't be choosers. Also, she was really fucking stupid in this movie. I refuse to believe rich people don't know there's easier ways to crack an egg than just throwing it in the pan. 
Because, yeah, she did that at one point in this movie. And also, if she's borrowing clothes from the Lost and Found box, why were they all specifically tailored to her, to her, what's it called, her body type? And then one last thing. Why do kids in these movies try so hard to get their parents in a relationship? I want nothing to do with my parents' relationship. That could just be me. I have friends who have all sorts of parent dynamics. All of them want nothing to do with their parents' relationship. To the extent that kids in Hallmark movies are involved, I think it's weird. But again, these aren't supposed to be realistic. I hate these movies because of what they're supposed to be and they fulfill that. But whatever. Lindsay Lohan love you. Just hope you're in better movies in the future. So my best movies of 2022, I had a version of Pinocchio on there. And I also have a version of Pinocchio on my worst movies of 2022. And that is Disney's live action Pinocchio. It's just a live action remake of their cartoon from the 40s. And this was fucking insulting. Everyone always prefers the original animated movies. I cannot for the life of me understand why Disney keeps making these soulless live action films. I mean, I do. It's a cash grab. I get it. But like, you, I, I just, I don't get it because of J Bob Chapek, who I know is not CEO anymore, but J Bob, I keep saying Job Chapek, Bob Chapek's comment about how, you know, he needs to make these live action movie for the adults because, you know, they need something to watch when the kids go to bed. But like, if you're making, because th that was one of my gripes with this movie, it's almost like frame for frame, almost being the key word, the original cartoon. So if it's the same story, but a different medium, what is the point of remaking it? And everyone I know who watched this thought it was garbage and they all went back to the original cartoon or they looked forward to Guillermo del Toro's version. Guillermo del Toro's version is at least an original take on it and he's not he's not insulting animation. I'm so 20 we're in 2023 I hope I wish people would stop saying animations just for kids because there's plenty of great animation out there and also the whole point of Disney why Walt Disney made the movies he made was so everyone can enjoy it adults adults included and the adults myself included I still love the original cartoon of Pinocchio and this was just fucking garbage and not just because of what Bob Chapek said but I also do have like actual gripes with this script like as a story as a narrative. Pinocchio is not a little shithead in this. The whole point of Pinocchio is that, is that this little shithead had to learn how to be a better person so he could become a real boy. It's basically a story of a kid learning to mature but in this version he was a nice kid all around constantly second guessing everything and it made me question what was the point of him doing any of these bad deeds because at least like in the original cartoon the bad deeds made sense it was because you know he didn't think things through he was just a kid about it whereas this one he's an angel of sorts and it's like why he he knows that's bad so why did he go through with it it leads to like my next thing like with disney's live action protagonists and their live action remakes like these people these characters have no flaws and it, these characters don't feel realistic and something you can relate to anymore because part of these stories is learning from your flaws but if you have nothing to learn from you're just you're not relatable you're just robotic Pinocchio felt like a robot in this and not only is he uncanny in personality but he was also uncanny in character design like he's clearly CGI while everyone else is live action and there's just no life to those eyes and it was weird and also Geppetto and the Cricket as characters were fucking annoying. I thought Tom Hanks was way too over the top in his acting in this and his Italian accent was terrible and Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Jiminy Cricket was annoying, tried too hard to be funny and if I have to hear Pinocchio one more time I am walking into Lake Michigan with cement shoes because that he's it, five seconds into the movie he said that and I was like oh boy this is a doozy it's gonna be shit just because of this and speaking of shit there's actually a scene in this movie where Pinocchio bends down and smiles at shit Twitter made fun of it to no end so I didn't believe it until I watched the movie and I was like w what is the point of this this is weird curiosity I guess I what so yeah this was insulting I don't know why I watched this number three on this list is an anime movie called bubble this takes place in a world where Tokyo is drowning because of a bubble explosion so now a bunch of orphan boys do some parkour in the area that's blocked off and illegal for them to go to and then one day this bubble turns into a human girl named Uta the only thing I liked about this film was the parkour just because I thought the camera movements is what made it more exciting because I know nothing about parkour but I was still very excited but that's unfortunately it this movie is literally just Han Christian Anderson's version of the Little Mermaid but with a softer tone which is fine like retelling Zara thing I felt like with this one I had a very hard time with because if I wanted to consume that story I would have just read it if that makes sense I mean Uta will literally quote the story as she's performing the same actions which 
honestly, like, the trope's been done before, but it's honestly never a trope I've been a fan of, unless you kind of put a twist to it. But I just feel like the story didn't do a good job with those twists and making it its own. And if, if anything, I was just kind of kind of annoyed. It, it's like, and do I have the right to be annoyed? Because it was basically, it was basically The Little Mermaid and the movie Splash with Tom Hanks from the very beginning. So I should have seen it coming, but I was still kind of pissed. The pacing in this film was also very jarring. It was a very excited beginning and a very exciting ending. However, the middle was so slow but also very choppy. I feel like it should have been a 12 episode long anime and therefore they could expand the world. They could show us more of the world because the world itself seemed kind of cool. And also just work on character development because our main protagonist, I can't remember his name, but he starts the movie off hating Uta. It felt like out of nowhere he suddenly had rom romantic feelings for her. I didn't really see the connection though. Like it's supposed to be a romance of sorts, but I didn't see the connection. I didn't even see a friendship connection when that happened. I didn't, I didn't feel it. And I feel like it's because the shorter run time didn't give them enough time to develop those feelings. Her motives didn't feel strong to me. If anything, I felt like they were jumping the gun too fast. But yeah, I was sorely disappointed in this film just because it is by Wit Studio, who did the first three seasons of Attack on Titan, and the composer of Attack on Titan worked on this. So a lot of people were excited about it, and I just felt like it was a huge letdown, and it was kind of boring. Number two on this list, we have a Disney Channel movie that I did not choose to watch on my own, and that is Zombies. This takes place in the world where there's your normal people, then there's your zombies. The zombies are allowed to now go to school with the normal people, but I hated everything about this. Like, I, I again, I said, because I mentioned I didn't choose to watch this on my own. I was on a Disney cruise and all my friends that I was with really wanted to watch this before bed, and I was the only one questioning why, but they they swore to me it's a good movie. I don't think so. It's, I mean, it's number, it's the second worst movie I watched in 2022, and it's basically because I grew out of my love for Disney Channel original films. This movie has everything Thing I hate about them. The cringy humor that only 10 year olds would laugh at, the terrible acting, and the terrible music. It physically hurt me to hear the main guy rap, try to rap in the beginning. I, I thought it was a trip. Also, the makeup was horrendous. I get that Disney Channel original movies do not have, you know, the Disney budget that all the other Disney movies have, but I feel like they could have made him look more like a zombie than just put, you know, green eyeshadow all over his face and color and spray his hair green with, you know, the green hairspray you could buy at like Party City or the dollar store. Like it looked cheap. Maybe it wasn't hairspray. For all I know, it was a shit wig. However, part of me just feels bad harping on this movie because I am clearly not in the target audience anymore. Like if it wasn't for my friends, I would have never watched this. So I guess it's like Power of the Dog where this movie is just victim of not being my cup of tea but just unlike the power of the dog where it's just not my genre but it is my age range like this movie was not not only is it not my genre but it's not my age range which made everything worse and just cringy i just hate it i hated everything about this all oh, in the colors the colors were horrible the whole pink and green theme oh my I, I hated the shade of pink they used but anyway again i'm just too old for this movie that's why i hated it and it's number two on the list it's just to me it's objectively bad but whatever let's move on at number one of my worst movies of 2022 we have a movie that is actually considered one of the worst movies ever made and wow were they right and that is santa claus conquers the martians in this movie martians kidnap santa but then there's just like weird stockholm syndrome thingy where he essentially brings happiness to the martians because the martians want the whole north pole concept and the same thing as earthlings it, it, it's it's weird. I don't know. Why did I choose to watch this? First of all, the makeup and costuming was horrendous. It was just like the Martians were just a bunch of people with horrendous cheap looking green face paint. The things on their head looked like this weird looking helmet with a like literally like a TV antenna sticking out of their heads. It was really weird. And the actors took themselves a little too seriously in this film. I mean, this movie wasn't self-aware in the slightest, but our poor actors who, you know, probably just needed a job because rent is due. I get it. They had to say some of these serious lines with their full chest. I think one of the reasons the seriousness took me out of it is because these poor actors had to say it in these ridiculous costumes and these ridiculous sets for this ridiculous plot. It just felt so out of place, which I, which is why I feel like this movie would maybe do fairly well if it was supposed to be like a comedy parody and not the serious movie that it's in honest to god supposed to be. Lazy world building, I mean like the names are literally, like the girl, her name is Gurmar, you know, Gur for girl, Mar for Mars, there's Momar, 
Mo for mom, Mara for Mars. And not only were the intentional jokes not funny, but even the stuff that wasn't supposed to be funny was not accidentally funny. Not like, because you know how in like movies that are so bad they're good? Like, for example, Falling for Christmas, she had amnesia. There's a part where she gets her memories back. So, in all seriousness, the poor guy said with his full chest, forget about it. That's not supposed to be funny. That's emotional. I laughed my fucking ass off. So, you know, so bad it's good humor. The movie didn't even have that. It was plot holes galore, so motives didn't make sense. Problem solving came way too easy for our characters. Also, this movie's a slog. I spent a lot of it on my phone after a while, and I was still able to comprehend what was going on. And yeah, I hated everything about the movie the Zombies, but that at least has, like, the tar target audience excuse, because I know kids in that target audience loved that movie. I mean, there's Zombies 1, 2, and 3, and everyone at Disney World talks about it. But the reason this is number one and not before that is because did the target audience even like this film? Like, it's clearly supposed to be... I don't know, actually, I can't even say clearly. I don't know if it's supposed to be a family film or not, but, like, I don't even... I can't even imagine kids liking this movie. This truly watches something like a bunch of people who've never worked on film before got cocky, thought to themselves, I can make a serious masterpiece, and then no one told them no. At least other movies on this list, I did have something good to say, or if I did not have something good to say, it was basically... My excuse was just that it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't my thing. It was a me issue, not the movie issue. But folks, this movie is number one on the list because I have absolutely nothing good to say about this movie. It has no excuse. It's not a me thing. It is definitely the movie thing. I wasted an hour and 45 minutes of my life on this movie, and it's unfortunately an hour and 45 minutes I will never get back, and I need the people of this movie to make it up to me in some way. Actually, I need them to come to my house with flowers and snacks and apologize. But that's it for this video. I got a lot off my chest. I love ranting about things I hate because I could just, I could just rant, say all my troubles with them, and then never think about them again. I will never be watching these movies again. And I'm, I'm glad I made you guys suffer along with me. Let me know down below some shitty movies y'all watch, what your least favorite movie of 2022 was. If you guys have any unpopular opinions, I'm here for it. I, some of y'all got juicy opinions. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe, y'all know the drill. And without further ado, I'm gonna peace out and I'll see you guys later. Ciao, tutti.